Today, let's talk about how you can use Vim, V-I-M, shortcut commands in LogSeq and Obsidian. Hi, I'm Ellie. I'm a founder of a 5,000 member Asian design community. And in this channel, I talk to you about visual thinking design and self-development. I have a question for you. If you did not have a mouse and you could not use the arrow keys on your keyboard, how would you navigate around your computer screen? How would you navigate a text editor? Well, that was a question one of the creators of the original VI or program and later on improved called with Vim, V-I-M. What am I talking about? What is V-I? What is Vim? Well, let's take a quick look at Wikipedia. So V-I was originally a screen-oriented text editor and originally created for the Unix operating system. Later on, it was improved to VIM or Vim improved. Funny, right? Um, it's a text-based editor. So Vim is a text editor. And one of the cool things about Vim is when it came out, it allowed you to navigate the computer screen without using the mouse and the arrow keys in your keyboard. Why would you want to do that? It, it used keys that were near the fingers when you're typing. So instead of using the arrow keys, which typically back then the arrow keys are on the right side with the long keyboard. What's cool about Vim is that you can actually navigate the screen without necessarily moving your fingers away from the main keyboard line. So if you're used to, used to typing, normally your fingers are focused on a central part of your keyboard and disrupted your flow every time you move your fing fingers into the arrows area. So instead of moving your fingers to arrow, you would need just need to type in the key, certain keys to move around the keyboard. Now let me quickly show you how Vim looks like. Normally it's available in a Unix operating system in the terminal, you can access it. So I'm using a Mac right now and Mac is based off the Unix operating system. And if I can type Vim and enter a key, it will open this Vim Improve. It's version 8.2. And I can now start typing. Hello, this is how you use Vim you can type easily on the screen. What's cool is you can easily navigate. How? So let me show you. If I want to jump to a particular uh, to a particular part of the screen, I I can. If, if I want to go to the very top, I would press. Sh Shift G, something like that, but I would need to escape. There are two modes in Vim, the um, command mode. So if I go to command mode, Shift G, I go up there. If I go to go down, I Shift capital G. If I want to G, G, I go up. So that's an example of how you can, uh, a brief look at how you can navigate around Vim. I can also jump to, a to the end of a text. Uh, I can go down by pressing J, 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 and can go up by pressing K, 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 K. I can go to the end of the screen by pressing Shift A. Uh, and a lot more other commands are available on Vim. And there are actually online Vim cheat sheets if you'd like to find out how to use um, the Vim, Vim a bit more than how it looks like. So you can replace characters. So you can do a lot of things. You can replace characters. You can replace more than one character. Um, you can connect. So you can see here, yank. Yank is to copy a line. Uh, but when you start using this, you can start off with the basic uh, command line, uh, H, J, K, L, top of the screen, move the middle of the screen. So I actually memorize only some basic commands when I'm using Vim. And if you're starting to use Vim for uh, LogSeq and Obsidian, you can start off with some basic commands. And that's what we're trying it out today. So how would you use Vim for something like Obsidian? Now to use Vim for Obsidian, you need to turn on the settings for for uh, Vim. And you can see it on the lower left, just move here. Lower left, you, if you press this lower left, you will see the, the settings and the options will come out. And if, if you options come out, you can see at the very bottom this uh, Vim key bindings. If you turn on this switch, this uh, control for Vim key bindings, 
you will be asked these questions. Uh, to verify that you know your way around Vim, please enter the command to quit Vim without saving. And that command is command Q. So, so this is one of the basic things that you'll need to know if you're using Vim. And Vim is, is turned on now. Okay, and I started a sample document now. Let's try to see what kind of commands I can use in uh, Vim. Now, I actually don't know if you can do help in Vim. No, not, not a command available in, it's not a command that's available if you, if I, let me just move myself around here. If I ty type in the first command in um, Vim, so let's see, it's command help. There's no help available. <laughs> But can you save? Can you save file? Not a command here. You close. It's not a command here. And it's terminal. I doubt actually you can do this same commands here. That, that's not available. No, normally these aren't used anyway for um, Vim. Let's see the basic commands. So H is to move left. So let's put some sample text here. This it's I'm go into I'm going into um, edit mode so this is some sample text for vim for a vim demo vim demo this this is the second line this is the third line and this in the last line so for example we have that if i want let's use the basic commands i go to I press the escape key and you see the cursor change i can navigate up and down if i press uh, h let's let me press h i'm pressing h now if i want to move to the left uh, that's for, well it's on the left end of course so if i want to move down j j j moving down if i go k k k you'll see the cursor is going up we can increase the size so j j j k k k if i want to move the cursor left l l l l you see the cursor mo moving to the right and if i want it to move to the left h now if i want to go to the top of the screen h the middle of the screen m to the bottom shift L so let's it looks like the basic commands are wor working for obsidian okay. jump in front of the word so if you want if I want to jump and navigate by word 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 if I want um, towards, towards the end of the word E it is you notice it will jump to the last letter of the word and then if I want to go, um, those are the commands here, back, start of the word, B, B, B. So I'm going through each of the commands here. If I want to move to a matching character, let's see if I can see it. Move to a matching character. Uh, the, 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 uh, If I want to move the matching characters, if I say I want to use T and I want to go to the next T, it should be shift, uh, uh, what's that command? Uh, this move to matching character is parenthesis. Can you move? Nope. Jump to the, it's not, jump, it's not moving to matching character. Let's move the matching character. It's not moving. So how about um, start of the line? So if I if I go to the end, so just that that's just a brief example of how you can see how Vim works like on Obsidian. Now let's see how how does Vim look like in another tool called Logzy. So now I will try to use the same cheat Vim cheat commands in Logzy. This this tool now I'm using is Logseek, and you can turn it on. Uh, if you turn on the settings for, um, so there's settings and you need to go turn on developer mo mode first. Once you have developer mode, you can, you are, will be able to see the um, plugins. 
So from the plugins, you look for Vim shortcuts and then turn on Vim shortcuts. It is still in version 0001. It is a plugin in LogSeq, unlike Obsidian, that it comes a part of one of the core um, plugins with the main uh, app itself. Once you have that turned on, let's go back. And, uh, let's go to the Vim demo. So let me just close this. Um, let's see. Let's do the same thing that I did in um, in, uh, Obsi in uh, Obsidian. So let me copy this te text from there. Move it to see how how much we can change so let's see actually i doubt if we will see the same commands here um like no it doesn't show it doesn't work with help save or close terminal it doesn't work in obsidian as well it's, it's a different uh, it's not it's not really optimized for that but let's see if we can move around using the same cursor movement if i press h okay i'm, I'm in insert mode so can I go H? Nope, it's not moving. Per oh, say wait. I copy pasted. The entire text should be per line. So let's see if I can move cursor. I cannot move cursor left or right. So what it what it does? I can move the line up and down. So if I press J, 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 J. And then KKK, I can move up and down. If I move capital H, will I go to the top? It doesn't move. If I capital M, no. So th those don't work. Um, so there are very limited things you can do in the log, log 6 version of Vim findings. Can I do? Um, end of the word can it do an end of the word no it can't do end of the word so it looks like the the way vim navigates in log seek so far is only per line and not per character like we could do in um, in um, obsidian right so here in obsidian you can clearly jump hl I can move left and right. So definitely it's much more powerful doing it in Obsidian than in LogSeq. But some people, are, it, it, this is enough. So that's how you can quickly turn on Vim in either LogSeq or Obsidian. And as you can see, the Obsidian is much more mature and even the key bindings in um, for Vim in Obsidian, have there are more features there that show that maturity. You can do per character movement, which you can't do yet on LogSeq. And Obsidian, that comes default with the app itself, with the software itself. Um, in LogSeq, it is a third-party uh, plugin. Somebody else had made it so that it works. And you can basically navigate per line and not really per character yet. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I talk more about things like this uh, using note taking tools like Obsidian and LogSeq. Actually, you might want to take a look at how I use both LogSeq for um, my mobile and LogSeq as a inter for my interstitial journal. Okay. So, I hope this helped you out. If you liked it, like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see other videos, I do have other videos talking about how I do interstitial journaling on LogSeq and even how to use interstitial journaling on LogSeq the mobile app. Right, see you guys next time.